The card that I'm going to show you how to make today made use of Stampin's Up! Sugar Plum Dreams stamp set. It is just so appropriate for a little stage setup shadow box card. And again, the marvelous thing about this is that it does fold flat into a standard envelope for mailing uh, and depending on the embellishments that you add to it. If it's not too thick, it will go for one stamp. This card easily adapts to use any other um, sets that you want to use with it. I can see that I will probably use the um, cauldron, the uh, Halloween stamp and die set for that. I think that that would be just darling using a black card base and some other things. So you have the card here, has a little sentiment on the inside of it with all of the figures there. Little mock curtains on the side of it and a curtain header here at the top of it. Looks like a stage there. Fold it flat and once you put a sentiment and your signature on the back of it, it is ready to drop into the mail. Um, I think that I'll probably add a few more embellishments to it, um, possibly some little metallic dots to it, or maybe pearls. I haven't absolutely decided on this one. But let's get started and show you how to make this little card. All right, now let's get into the cardstock that you're going to need to make this card for you. All right, the first one is for the card body. It is cut four inches by 10 and 7 eighths inches. You score it at three and a half, five and a quarter, eight and three quarters, and ten and a half. The side panels, decorator side panels, you need two of them that are one and a half by three and three quarter. I do like to emboss them for a little bit of um, added interest to it. Then you need the top curtain panel that hangs on the inside of the card. I start off with a piece that is cut two inches by four and a half, score one half inch at each end of it. I run it through the embossing folder and then I fussy cut the bottom edge of it. The top portion of it will also be cut off later, but that is after you have the card together and see exactly how far down that uh, curtain header hangs. Next, you will have two pieces of wood grain paper for the stage that the figures will stand on. One is cut one inch by four and three quarter. The other is cut one and a quarter inch by four and three quarter. And each of them are scored five eighths inch at each end. The back panel that you use for stamping a sentiment and signing it is cut three and three eighths by three and seven eighths. Then the inside background back panel, it is also cut three and three eighths wide by three and seven eighths inch high. The sentiment that you stamp on the inside of it, it is one and a quarter inches from the bottom of the card and approximately centered. I'll show you what I did, but it's slightly different than what you'll need to do because I had the piece too short. Um, and I don't have the stamp set I had borrowed from a friend, so I'll need to redo this. But it is centered and the bottom edge of the sentiment is one and a quarter inches from the bottom edge of the paper. 
also, as you can see, that was run through an embossing folder too to give a little bit of texture to it. Now, this next portion, I cannot tell you the exact dimensions on it because it will depend on what size of nesting squares you have. The nesting squares that I have, the ones that I used were approximately two and three quarter inches that I cut the frame out of. And then the to cut the inside of the frame out, it is one that is approximately two and a half inches. Whatever you have that is approximately that size is going to work. So let's just get started on what we need to do with this card. Oops, one more thing. You'll stamp your little stamp color and fussy cut your little figurines. Um, Again, this is the uh, Sugar Plum Dreams that was done, and thank you very much, Sharon, for doing all the stamping and coloring on those. I appreciate that. However, any other set that you have that you wanted to change the theme would work. I also cut approximately eight snowflakes out of metallic paper, various uh, sizes and styles, cut some of them in half, and you'll see why as we go on. Okay, first thing is the card body. What you will want to do is turn it so that the larger section is at the right hand side. Then your two side panels, glue them in position. And again, I like to use glue on these. I do not feel like snail adhesive holds firmly enough for embossed pieces, especially something that has a deep embossing on it. Just center those in the side panel. You'll have approximately an eighth of an inch all the way around on these. And you want to have them so that the embossing pattern is the correct way up. If there is a right or wrong or it's a one-way pattern, you want to have them both match. All right, now that we have those done, I'm going to show you how I did the frame on this. I cut the frame out of my two and three quarter inch die, square die. Now, what you want to do is glue this into position. You want to have the glue on it as close to the edge. Keep in mind, you are only going to have about an eighth of an inch left of this all the way around it. And you want to have glue on every part of that edge. So, and if you get glue into the center of it, that works fine too. It doesn't make any difference at all. But you want to have it as close to the edge of that square as possible. Now, position it on the front of it. You want to have it about equal distance from the top and also equal distance from each side. And glue that in place. And then what I'm going to do is put the one and a half inch nesting square on top of it and hold it securely with some removable tape. I will take this to my big shot and be back in just a moment. All right, now that I have the center of that card cut out, um, i tell you, I like to do the gluing of the frame onto the card first. That way, when I cut it out, 
the two squares are cut exactly right and with as narrow as this frame is you're not worrying about the paper moving a little bit and not ending up with a totally square opening on it so all right let's get started on the inside of it turn it over first thing that you're going to want to do is take this curtain header and actually I didn't want to have it turned over what I will do what I do is I hold it in the opening and decide how far down I want to have that um, keep in mind that you're going to be having some figures behind in here and you don't want them to hang over the head so I think that this is probably going to be about as low as I want to have that curtain header hanging. I then take a pencil, mark it, and cut that portion off. And You just want to have it kept square in there. Oops, that's not. All right, now what you're left with is the curtain header that will go in there. You have your scored ends, fold them toward you and with the card turned over and folded on the score lines what you'll do is when you're looking at the front side of that header with the tabs folded toward you you're going to put some glue on the back side of the left tab. And then moving that tab to the front edge of the card so it snugs in next to the fold. And if you lie it straight, you will match up the top edge of the card with the top edge of the curtain header and snugged up against there. This is all part of what you need to do to keep the whole card square so that it folds nicely. Next, with the two wood grain pieces, the one inch strip fold with the tabs toward you. And again, on the left hand tab, the back side of that tab, put glue on it and snug it next to the front fold there and straighten it out. Keep the bottom edge of the wood grain tab straight with the bottom edge of the card. This next piece is a little different. The one and a quarter inch one, fold the tabs away from you. Now on the left tab again, put some glue on the front, end, front part of the tab. Enough glue that it will hold, but yet not so much glue that it's going to start oozing out. Now, you want to slide this tab against the fold there. And again, lie it flat and make sure that the bottom edge of that piece is lined up with the bottom edge of the card. What I like to do at this point is put some of 
the snowflakes in place. All of this is so much easier to do when the card is lying flat. You want to have enough glue to hold them in place, but yet not so much that it's going to ooze out all over the place. And I'm just going to put a couple of them in so that you can see how I'm doing it. I do not want to have the snowflakes covering over the fold. The metallic paper that I'm using buckles if you try to fold it, especially over a double layer of paper. So I'm just putting it in place and holding it there. Now, if I was doing this for a card that I was going to take time on, I would be putting more of the snowflakes on them and more glue in position. Frankly, I anticipate that this one I'm going to have to redo some of the glue on the snowflakes. I just don't want to take your time to do things like gluing that you know how to do. This is just to show you the card itself. All right, now, while the card is open like this, take your background piece that you put the inside sentiment on, and again, just pretend that this is all one piece that I didn't mess up and cut it too short to start off with. So glue it in place. It will leave about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around it. Now you have that much done. All right, what we're going to do at this point is fold To remember which way I was doing this. Now fold it so that all the tabs are lying this way. And when it's this way you can see already that I need to trim just a tiny bit off the edge of that one and a quarter inch wood grain, wood grain tab. So otherwise it's not going to fit in the fold. All right, what I do at this point is I fold these tabs. The, when it is in this pos open position, I fold the tab for the curtain header toward myself, put glue on the back of it, fold the one inch wood grain tab toward myself, put glue on the back of it, and the one and a quarter inch wood grain tab I leave in the open position and put glue on the front of it. Now I just fold that and close it. And the tricky part about this is getting enough glue on it that it will hold but yet not so much glue that it oozes out and sticks to the inner portion of the card where you don't want it to stick. All right, it opens up well. Now what I'm going to do is on this 3 8 inch tab that I have here, again put some glue on it and the front of the card I will fold it back on there and making sure that everything is lined up at the top and the bottom there. Again, enough glue to hold, but yet not so much glue that it's going to ooze out onto the inside of the card. Now, you have the basics of this card done. What 
you want to do is whether it is this set of figures or another set that you choose to use. I initially put temporary adhesive on the back of them so that I can slip them in place and have the option of moving them around a little bit if I don't like it. And once I figure out where they fit, then I use the permanent adhesive on it. Oh, already I can tell I don't like him there, so I'll put him a little bit lower. And the sugar plum fairy. Put her in there. And the rat king. Let's just see what I've got here. Snowflake there, and one there. There. Now this is your little stage card that you have put together. Once I have the card completely finished, um, all of the figures glued in place or permanently taped in place, I will take the back panel. If I'm going to stamp a sentiment on it, I stamp it then. I will sign it then. And then, folding the card flat, remember which direction you folded it when you assembled it because it's going to fold much better that way. I fold it flat, turn it over, and then I adhere the sentiment panel to the back of it. So, I hope you all enjoy this and it is a very fun card to make. Thank you.